So uh, I'm going to read two sets of 38 minutes each of, um, of old stuff, which is this. And uh, the second set will be new stuff, largely projected. So don't go away, it'll be uh, more fun. I'd like to read uh, some of these Vion translations that Chris mentioned. Uh, and this one goes out to uh, Jertuma at uh, Miami High. It's 1456, and I, Francois Villon, a student of many things, being reasonably intelligent, straightforward, and somewhat restrained, but no man's fool, continued to carry on the argument of my being, as the teacher said, it was good advice, else we're all just slumbering idiots. It's hard times, as they say. Christmas is a dead season. The wolves have their snouts up constantly, and you'll keep home if you know what's good for you if you have a home. It's cold out there. For myself, though, strangely, the desire is greater to break out of the space I inhabit in love's dungeon, though the downpour puts a damper on my soul. And there are a lot of bastards out there. To begin with, I know that I am not, in the galaxy of people, an angel. Nor is my mother a poor woman, so I'm not even the son of an angel. My father, God save him, is dead. His body slumbers on under some rock. My mother will go soon, and she knows it too. But following her, I'll make the trip myself not long after to check the view. I don't really think my wife's life's been wasted on too much drinking and fucking. At any rate, I've never sold out for love. Nothing at any rate which my friends could reproach me for. Nothing that is of any worth to them. But I don't think I can exaggerate in saying this, and if required, I can make my case. Anyone who's never done any wrong need never speak. So these poems are written in French uh, more than 500 years ago, 1450s, so only 50 years before Leonardo, but it was the end of the Middle Ages. Actually, I think it's the beginning of modern times, all that stuff about Baudelaire being uh, begin, the beginning of modernism. Uh, there's nothing in Baudelaire that's not in Vion. Now, it's well known how much I have loved, and I would do it again willingly, but my spirit is broken for it, and I'm hungry for something more satisfying than romance and another love affair. Someone else will have to stand in for me, who still has the stomach for it, for love dances on its own appetite. Christ, if only I'd learned another skill when I was young, or else learned how to play the game. I'd have myself a house by now and soft bed, but no, I quit school like every other smart-ass punk. And now as I write this appeal for transfer or parole, I don't know if I'll even have the heart to take it if it's granted. Item, my university degree, I leave it to anyone who needs it in favor of seclusion from adversity, a poor clerk in a celestial city, content with soup, a sharp eye, and a woman's charity, nature, the naked voyager, the pauvreté of, of being poor. When I start to feel useless and miserable, my heart usually tells me to cool it, not be feeling so sorry for myself, getting depressed with so much general decay. It bids me remember how poverty is the specter of, the specter of genius, and better to be poor and live under a writing table than rich and rot behind nine tons of granite. If the woman who I used to love, constantly and unconstantly, with only wronged and hurt me, finally fucking me over completely, had only loved with me from the start, told me what she really wanted, but no way, I probably would have, wouldn't have stayed with her. I probably would have been free all this time. But she had this clever way of listening to whatever you said without agreeing or disagreeing with anything. She just leaned over towards you and lead you to think she liked you. She was just having a good time, 
with another dedicated confidant. She was just playing for what she could get. She sure had me wrapped around her little finger. Could always make me believe something else was happening. Expecting cake, <clears throat> you got slag. You wanted a Stetson, she'd hand you a hard hat and a good thing. For Sterling, she offered tin cans. She'd do you a full house, but she always called low ball. The witch could always convince you her shit was brilliant. <coughs> that heaven was an electric kitchen. That cotton was cowhide. That morning was really evening. The leftover cabbage was truffles. That a burgy of all shit was a Heineken. That a pig was a gazelle. San Quentin a salon. Or the landlord just another panhandler. Her shit was brand. And so love made you an idiot. Led you down the road feeling fine. I think no man is smart enough, not even if he were sharp as a pawn shop operator to save his laundry and his skin from such a manhandler as this one. She drew you up just to cut you off. Therefore, I renounce love and despise it and defy both its fire and its blood. Death is what this woman defined, and I was all blind to her. This time I put my appeal away for good. I will never follow love again. If I used to be an adoring captain of the arms, I hereby declare I am no longer such a fool. I throw all my former music to the wind. If you want it, go ahead, but henceforth, for me it is all over. I need to get back to my original purpose. If anybody asks me or wonders why I bad enough love this way, I have to figure it out for themselves. It's death that teaches you to speak of everything. Pretty good for 1850, isn't it? I love and serve the lady with good spirit. You needn't take me for a vile sight, for she has silky ways and delicate ends. For some, this means chains and whips, but whatever they want, and I go and get a pitcher of wine to help them on without their noticing. There's fruit and cheese as well, or bread and, and, and soda. And if they tend to be good, I say, keep it up. And come back whenever you're feeling wild to this nightclub where we're kings and queens. But sometimes there's a big hassle if Margot comes to bed claiming she's broke. Her line makes me sick. I kick her out or I'll rip her dress and tear her bangles off and threaten to pawn her clothes to get my cut. She gets brassy and uptight and screams, she'll kill me first for Christ's sake, you jerk, you asshole, you redhead pig. You can see why I have to grab something and lay my message rudely on her nose in this brothel where we have our scene. And then we make up, but she's so fucking bloated. She cuts a fart you wouldn't believe from a Gila monster and laughs and grabs me by the hair, calling me Romeo and socking me in the groin. We're both so drunk, we're unable to keep it up and so collapse till later when waking up, her belly speaks and she climbs on me obediently. I can hardly breathe, pin flat beneath her. This crazy nymph is gonna smother me in this nightclub where we have our scene. It never rains, but it freezes. My ass is done for. I'm a sex fiend, and her sex is fiendish. It's hard to say which of us wants to get it on more. We both want it all, and one dog smells another. It's kinky shit we go for. It's kinky shit we mean. We abhor purity. And let me tell you, it certainly abhors us in this whorehouse where we're kings and queens. That's enough of that.